hello! Today we are starting a vlogging project, which you guys know I love. So back in, I think this spring, I did a five-star prediction video where I let my patrons and members vote on books that they thought I might give five stars. And so I read those, that was a really successful project. But when I was wrapping that video up, I kind of stumbled into this idea of, oh, wouldn't it be fun if we did like a bracket style where people could kind of like vote on what I was gonna read. And that would be fun for me because because we had I had this big list of books that people had recommended that didn't make it into what I chose to read, but I thought it might be kind of fun to let people pick my TBR for me in that way. So the idea is we've got four divisions. I culled the list down to 48 books. So we have four divisions. Each division has 12 books. I've done them based on genre more or less. So we have a general fiction division, a nonfiction division, a sci-fi fantasy division, and then what I called grab bag but was mostly mystery thriller. Those are the four different divisions. So we're gonna let people do three rounds of voting and whatever comes out on top, those are the four books that I'm gonna read. I should say that the recommendations uh, were half from that original video and then I let my patrons and members give me some more recommendations so that's kind of the pool. Of the books that are in the pool, most of them I would be fine reading. There's a couple I don't have as much excitement to read but I've eliminated anything that I've either already read or just straight up I'm like I don't want to read it. And then I also did a seating within the, the brackets based on my personal interest and then also based on I let people sort of second recommendations. So if somebody recommended this book and three other people also thought I would like it, they would say that they also thought I would like it. And so those are seated higher. Sometimes people, multiple people said that they thought I would like it, but I am very skeptical. So some of those ended up more in the middle. You know, overall, I tried to mostly let my opinion only be in the seating. And from there, we'll see kind of what happens. So let's see what all makes it. Okay, it's the morning of the tournament and I have my 48 books that we're gonna use. Let me grab my little bracket. So I have four different divisions. We've got a nonfiction division, a general fiction division, a SFF division, and a grab bag, which is a lot of mystery, but a couple of sort of like randos. So I just put the announcement up on Instagram and YouTube that this is happening. My lovely patrons and members obviously know that this has been happening because they picked the pool of books. So today is round one and Let's see, let's make some predictions together. Let me, let me look here. Okay, I think I seeded these in a way that took into account if people seconded <clears throat> recommendations. So I tried to put those higher. I also looked up all of the books. So I took some of my preference into account with seeding. And I did, like some of the ones that got double voted, I just, I'm really hesitant to read. So there's one <clears throat> in particular nonfiction, which is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Not that I don't think that's going to be good. I just don't, I'm going to have to be in a very specific place mentally to read that. So I seeded that a little lower than I think my patrons would have wanted, but you know, give and take here. That's a prediction I have is that that may end up going further than it's seeding just because I could see people recognizing it and really wanting me to read it. So that's a prediction. Another one I think may, that may go further than it's seeding is Heartstopper because I'm not particularly interested in reading that, but I know it's been really popular. So I could see that one. Um, I think I seeded that at nine. So I could see that one going further. I'll be interested to see in the general, I was surprised at how much general fiction got recommended. I don't think of myself as much of a general fiction reader these days, but I guess maybe I am. The number one seed, it's not a book I had heard of before, but it was seconded twice. So that means three different people voted on it and it's like the Cat Chronicles. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that one. I'm guessing that for the sci-fi fantasy division, Neverwhere and A Psalm for the Wild Built are both gonna get to the final three. If I were gonna, this is the one that I feel like I have a guess at the final three. I think it's gonna be Neverwhere, Psalm for Wild, A Psalm for the Wild Built, and Bear and the Nightingale just because of popularity of those books. So that's my guess for the final three. Anyway, I'm about to hit publish on all of these. So let's see what you guys do. The 
beauty and power of voting is that you never know what humans are gonna do. So let's find out. Well, 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 how the turntables have turned. Um, I'm gonna say, guys, for the most part, very surprised by a lot of the results coming out of day one. So I will say that the bracket that had the least surprises was general fiction. That one, my members basically voted for the top seed across the board. There was one tie with If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha versus The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. And since the rest of them had been so by the seed, I decided to break the tie with the lower seed just to keep it interesting. But that one went like pretty much as expected. I would say all the other ones had surprises. So I'm gonna say for the SFF bracket, which was on Instagram, I purposely put Neverwhere and American Gods against each other because I didn't wanna be in a situation where we had two Neil Gaimans in the finals, like that just felt weird. But I'm really surprised that American Gods won because Neverwhere was the number one seed and American Gods was the 12 seed. So, I don't know. I had more of my patrons and members who thought that I would like never wear. Like that's the one that they more than one person voted for it. So that surprised me. And then there a lot of the ones that didn't, there were other upsets, but I don't think I really knew enough about any of the other ones to be super surprised by it. So we definitely have my original three prediction on that one is mostly intact, except that I guess swap out Neverwhere for American Gods. So my prediction is it's going to be American Gods, Psalm, Psalm for the Wild Built, and um, The Bear and the Nightingale will be in the final three on that one. Okay, and then on nonfiction for my patrons, they very much surprised me. They voted for a lot of the lower seated ones. And I'm gonna be honest that some of the ones that they have left, I don't really want to read. Like I'm a little nervous that it's gonna be at, like, I'm trying to think of what would kind of be the worst case scenario. Not Nothing against any of these books necessarily, but I, my worst case scenario here would be that it's Twilight of Democracy by Anne Applebaum, just because I've read two books from her already and neither of them I love the writing on and it just it feels like a bummer. Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which again, I think is a great book. I just don't know if I'm gonna be in the right headspace to read it. And A Woman of No Importance by Sonia Purnell, just because it was a big bestseller, but it wasn't that enticing to me. So we'll see what happens there. I mean, it's gonna, I, all of the books that are left are edifying. Like, I don't think I'm gonna hate any of them, but it wouldn't necessarily be my top picks. But to be fair, that is why we're doing this. So we'll see what they end up doing. They had a lot of lower seated ones that went forward. For the grab bag, a couple of big surprises. So first of all, I'm very surprised that Heartstopper did not beat out Seven Days in June, but I guess that just speaks to the fact that people really like Seven Days in June. So that was exciting. Let's see here. The Cask beat The Collaborator of Bethlehem, which I actually still want to read The Collaborator of Bethlehem. That one seems like it's pretty cool. It's a mystery set in Jerusalem, I think. Also, Marple is demanding pets, as is her right. Yes. The Cask is like a random mystery from the 20s, and <laughs> that one won. Uh, and I guess the rest of them pretty expected. So if I'm guessing, my guess for the grab bag is that I'm gonna end up with three thrillers. I'm guessing it's gonna be Turn of the Key, His and Hers, and They Never Learn. So we'll see what happens there. But yeah, some surprising and somewhat worrying results in some of these brackets, but the whole point of this is for me to read things I wouldn't pick for myself. So I think we are successfully achieving that goal, if nothing else. Okay, we've made it to the finals, guys, and some interesting results. So um, as predicted, we've got American Gods, Song for the Wild Built, and Bear and the Nightingale. So that did, in fact, make our final three. 
trying to think. I honestly don't know which of those is gonna win. Like, I could see it going anyway. If it's American Gods, I think that's gonna delay the vlog because I believe it's pretty chunky. So I guess I don't want it to win, but I'd honestly be pretty happy reading any of those three. For Grab Bag, it ended up being three thrillers at the end of it. So it's Turn of the Key, uh, His and Hers, and They Never Learn. Again, I'd be pretty happy reading any of those. Do I have a preference? I would say Turn of the Key and They Never Learn are two that I've kind of had more on my radar. So I guess one of those two, but I'd honestly be happy with any of those. Then we have general fiction, and that is the only category where the top three seeds actually made it to the final three. So it's The Traveling Cat Chronicles, The Blue Castle, and Hamnet. So I'm, not, again, pretty ambivalent as to which of those wins. Do I have a preference? I guess I probably would... Mm, Traveling Cat Chronicles is intriguing to me, so I guess if I'm pulling for one of those, it would be that one, but I'd be cool with any of them. Then we get to nonfiction. This is where things <laughs> are in an interesting state. So it's The Deficit Myth, which is definitely what I would prefer. I already own the audiobook. That is, like, one that I want to read, so I would enjoy this kind of forcing me to do that. So that is in there, and that was the top seed. Then number five is The Badass Liber Librarians of Timbuktu by Josh Hammer, which I hadn't heard before but got recommended a couple of times. So I'm open to that. That sounds kind of interesting. And then the last one is Know Your Name by Chanel Miller, which we've already talked about. And I'm almost certain that that one is the one that's going to win. So of the categories, I would say nonfiction is where I'm like most like, ooh, okay. I think it will be an edifying reading experience. I'm already bracing myself. I think probably what I will do is not do audio for that because I think I could not handle hearing her voice tell that story. So I think probably what I'll do is get a physical copy of that book and then pick a day and read it straight through, like pick a day where I'm feeling okay and can deal with it. So that is my thought process on that one. So that's the only one where I'm fairly confident of who's going to win. The other three are pretty up in the air. So I think the next time we talk, we'll have our four books and we'll go from there. Okay, the polls are over and we have an interesting little group here. I don't know that this is exactly what I would have expected, but so for nonfiction, we do have Know My Name by Chanel Miller as our winner, which it came strong. I seeded it low because I was like, I don't know how I feel about reading this, but if people really want me to read this, I will. So people really want me to read it. So that's what we're going to read for nonfiction. For the grab bag division, Turn of the Key did win. I was duking it out there with They Never Learned for a while. For the general fiction category, we actually have a tie between Cat Chronicles and Hamnet. Um, and because Cat Chronicles is seated higher, and because honestly, it's the only one of these that I had not heard of really at all, I'm going to give it to that one. And then uh, the tightest race was in the sci-fi fantasy bracket between American Gods, Psalm for the Wild Built, and The Bear and the Nightingale. Really, it came very close. I think it was 34% for American Gods, 37% for Bear and the Nightingale, and then like, what would that be? 29% for Psalm for the Wild Built. So very, very close. But Bear and the Nightingale squeaked it out there. So I need to announce to everybody who the winners were. And uh, yeah, I've got some books to acquire. I have Bear and the Nightingale as audio already. So that is going to be my audio pick for this vlog. And then uh, I'm going to get in physical form, Know My Name, The Traveling Cat Chronicles, and Turning the Key. So this little melange of books here. They're all, I did very well with the five-star pick we did earlier in the year. Like I had a lot of really good reads from that. So I'm expecting that this is gonna be a bunch of books I really enjoy. I'll check back in when I have them.
Okay, friends, we have read all the books, all four of them, and so now it's time to give a little review ski. So, maybe we'll start, I don't really know where to start because there's one Claire standout, and the other three I probably feel roughly the same, which is I really, I didn't give anything less than a four star, um, so this was highly successful and makes me think maybe I should just let you guys <laughs> recommend me books all the time. But the one clear standout in this is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Yeah, this is really a really, really difficult read. Like there's no getting around that. Um, the reason it's so difficult to read aside from just like the subject matter itself is that Chanel Miller, oh gosh, okay. Sorry, my camera keeps moving here. Hopefully it's gonna stay. Chanel Miller is an extraordinary writer, um, especially given her age. Her writing is absolutely beautiful. It's also very humorous and like wry in some ways, which I think is a little bit of a surprise. I am torn about how much to say about this because I honestly feel like this is such a great example of where you need to let somebody tell their own story. So. I'll just say in terms of how this impacted me, this really sent me back to the moment where this case was blowing up in the news. So if you don't know Chanel Miller, I guess I can just tell you like the, why it's titled this and the project of the book if you don't know. Chanel Miller was originally a Jane Doe who was essayed while she was like drunk, passed out from a party at Stanford, Brock Turner. Her assailant was caught in the act by two Swedish men and was like forcibly pulled off of her. Even despite those facts, he ended up getting far too light of a sentence because he was like a promising young man or whatever. And Chanel's story at the time it was, or Emily Doe, sorry, her victim impact statement went viral on Buzzfeed at the time. So it's called Know My Name because this is when she's like identifying herself with that statement. When that statement first came out, I read it and it absolutely devastated me. And this story, because of just like the timing of when it was happening was very much during my deconstructing and sort of like awakening and embracing myself as a feminist. I think this story did for me s similar things to what the story of Trayvon Martin did for me with systemic racism, which is not that I didn't understand that, it, that horrible things happen to women or that horrible things happen to black people or whatever, but it was my moment as an adult of fully understanding and conceptualizing a systemic, a systemically oppressive system. So the same way that with Trayvon Martin, that was my moment as an adult of fully understanding and recognizing systemic oppression of black people in the US and how that manifests itself in violence. This was my moment of really conceptualizing and understanding systemic discounting of women by the criminal justice system, the systemic re-victimization of women by the criminal justice system and the systemic letting promising young men get away with horrible acts of violence because we as a society intrinsically value men more than we do women. So this kind of represents to me a very specific moment in my life and I absolutely love this. This is one of the best memoirs I've ever read and this is a great example where it's a lot of pain to read, but it both as a story and as a piece of art is, is worthy of the tears you will cry for it. Some sad things I feel like are emotionally manipulative and actually maybe that'll segue a little bit into my kind of critique of the Traveling Cat Chronicles. Um, they're emotionally manipulative and I feel like at the end of the, the day, they don't necessarily deserve the tears you cry for them. This is a gut-wrenching story that is beautifully told and will deserve every last tear that you cry over it. I decided to read this on a day when I was watching a Mormon Stories podcast about LGBTQIA plus experience for youth in the church. I was already weeping about that. And so while I was there, I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm already emotionally wrought today. So I might as well go ahead and read this. So five stars, 
absolutely fantastic. The clear standout of this group. I would say the Traveling Cat Chronicles is very charming, but it is, the thing that keeps me from fully loving it is that it is pretty emotionally manipulative and I can't really get into what about it is emotionally manipulative because it would be spoilery. But basically the setup is at the beginning of it, Nana, our you know, point of view cat, is a street cat who is adopted by, oh gosh, what is his name? Sadaru, sorry. Sadaru and him end up living together for several years after he gets hurt and Sadaru takes Nana in. And then kind of out of the blue, Sadaru realizes he's going to have to rehome Nana. And so it's like a road trip of him kind of visiting key people from his past, trying to find a home for Nana. And the ending of this, I mean, I wept. But I did feel, the thing that kept me from loving this was feeling like it was a little emotionally manipulative and just the fact that I happened to have read Robin Hobbs' version of a cat POV, which is just elite. It, nobody can do it better in my opinion. <laughs> so I really did like this. I would give this four stars, but you know, that's the thing that kept it from being like, oh, just favorite, favorite. But I can totally see why people recommended it because it's very charming and also I'm a cat lady. So uh, Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I can see why this is so divisive because the ending of this is a choice and I think some people will not like that choice. I actually quite liked the ending and I enjoyed where the story ended up going. I also loved seeing Ruth Ware in kind of a horror mode. So I knew that this was a, a retelling of the Turn of the Screw and it is. So, you know, it's like a nanny, rural, Scottish estate. It incorporates a lot of themes around technology and like the surveillance state because it's a smart home. So it's like this creepy, isolated, haunted Scottish manor that also has all these creepy like technology elements to it. I will say one of the reveals is so obvious from the jump to me. So I didn't feel like that was wholly successful, but this was like horror basically. And I've not read something from Ruth Ware that was horror. And I thought it was a pretty effective version of it. So I really like this. I could see why it might not be for everyone, but for me, I thought this was great. And then The Bear and the Nightingale, also really enjoyed. I actually have the full trilogy physical set on its way to me right now because I did really like the first book and I'm gonna keep going. I will say that the thing about this book that that kept me from giving it the full five stars. Oh, I should mention, I also gave this four stars and I gave Bear and the Nightingale four stars. So I gave three four stars and one five star. Bear and the Nightingale is weirdly paced. Like it's very slow burn and sort of like, if the beginning scene of Beauty and the Beast, like the bonjour, good day, like that whole thing. Um, if that were a creepy Russian village where everyone's starving and there's demons. <laughs> like, I mean, it's kind of just a lot of getting to know the village. It's very about the atmosphere and, you know, all of these characters and whatever. So I think if it had been, because it has a sort of fairy tale like quality that keeps you from feeling super close to the characters, I think I might have been more into that as a pace for the beginning part of the book if it had been a little more deep into the characters, but I felt a little removed from them. So it's just very slow. The first chunk of it is pretty slow, but the atmosphere is absolutely beautiful. I totally see why people say to read this in like the winter or the fall. It's a good winter read for sure. I'm gonna wait until it's well and truly pretty chilly out to keep going in this series. Like I could see this being, like I could see reading both of the um, final books in this trilogy in December kind of a thing. But it's it's really good at evoking the atmosphere. I really like fantasy that is based on sort of Russian or Slavic folklore traditions. I think that's really interesting. So I really liked all of that. And by the end of the book, I really liked where it left off. So Vasya and Moros, was his name? Moroskovo? Morozko, I think is the Frost Demon's name. So I, I liked where all of that ended up. It's clearly gonna be a romance and like, you guys, I, I mean, I was just talking about Beauty and the Beast. I love a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I love a Death and the Maiden kind of vibe and that's definitely what this is. So I also thought like it has some really interesting themes around religion, which always is a plus for me. Um, and there's a baddie who has a very Frollo Esmeralda kind of vibe that I thought was disgusting, yes, but also like an interesting angle. So all that to say, I this was a highly successful reading project. You guys did a fantastic job. I'm really glad that my patrons pushed me to read this because it was 
worthwhile and this is one that I don't know that I would have braced myself to read if I had not been pushed to so I'm really glad you guys made me do that so five stars for that four stars for the rest I actually think I only have one Ruth Ware left to read which is um the death of Mrs. Westaway so I'm almost caught up on all the Ruth Ware so those are the ones I read of the ones that I did not read that um, did not make it further in the tournament. Let me tell you which ones I put into my wish list because I thought they sounded interesting. Death of a Red Heroine by Kuyo Shaolong, which is a uh, mystery. The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia, which is a short story collection. Blood Sugar by Sasha Rothschild, which I think is some kind of thriller. Shadow Life by Hiromi Goto, which is some kind of like fantasy graphic novel. Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, which sounds like it's a literary romance. Wizard of the Crow by Nagugi Wa Tiongo, uh, which is a fantasy based in, I think, Kenyan, I want to say, mythology. The Collaborator of Bethlehem by Matt Reese, which is a mystery. And then were there any others? Oh yeah, Seek You, A Journey Through American Loneliness by Kristen Ratke, which is nonfiction graphic novel. Uh, and then I think I also put a couple of holds on other audiobooks that were nonfiction. Hold please, let me look that up. Command and Control by Eric Schlosser, which sounded like it was about the nuclear program. And then The Ghost Map by Steven Johnson, which is a history of how they figured out what caused cholera, I think, in the 1600s. So I got a ton of great recommendations from you guys. I think you guys nailed it. I had a great little bout of reading. I would definitely do this again if you guys are interested. Maybe we could do this again next fall. But yeah, I think for now, we'll call that a day. So let me know what you thought of any of these books. Let me know who you were rooting for in the voting. Did your picks win? Did they not? Do you have any of the ones that we looked at that you feel very strongly I should give a try? Let me know all that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!